It's Friday and it's time for your weekly UAS news update. This is week 58. This week I got four topics. The first one is the Mavic uh, 3 rumor that never was. Uh, I want to talk about the special FAR, or Federal Aviation Regulation, that was extended. I talked about this in the past, but I'll talk about it again. Um, I want to talk about Parrot. We talked about them two weeks ago, and they finally released a product that was rumored to be released. And a little, uh, a little sting to DJI at the same time when they released the product, which wasn't cool, quite frankly. And then lastly, I want to show you a map that shows all the drone rescues that, were, that happened in the world, which is really cool. So let's get to it. <music> Okay, the first thing this week is a Mavic 3 rumor that you may have seen online that actually happened to not be correct. Uh, Drone Excel reported that the Mavic 3 was expected to be released at the end of September, and uh, that's after some pictures had surfaced online. And as it turns out, well, these pictures were from a different drone that is uh, already in existence called the T16. It's a big agro drone from DJI. So uh, Drone Excel apologized. They posted something on their website. And uh, so it looks like if you were excited about the Mavic 3, uh, not at the moment. There is no real date or real information about when it's going to come out. So uh, move along, buy a Mavic 2 and then go fly or my, buy something, buy a Mavic Air 2 or whatever you want and then go fly and get some footage. Another piece of news coming from the FAA is the extension of the special federal aviation regulation that they put in place. Now with what happened with COVID, the FAA basically decided that because there were a lot of testing centers that were closed, this was going to hurt people that have a certificate that needs to be uh, renewed. I hate to say renewed because that's not the case. They had a certificate that was going to uh, get out of currency and they need to get recurrent. So you have to do the exam under part 107 every two years. And well, if the testing centers are closed, then you can't do that. And you can't exercise the privileges of your certificates. So the FA had come up and said, well, guess what? For the next couple of months, you'll be able to do this by going online, just like uh, manned aircraft pilots do when they want to be remote pilots. So there's an exam online that you can take, and then that is going to be good enough for an extension for six months. So uh, they've extended this. Uh, the, uh, initially, it was going to be until the end of June, and then now they've extended it to the end of September. So if your certificate expires between March and September, then you are allowed to do this process. Now, be careful. If you let your certificate lapse, uh, and again, I shouldn't say that. If your currency lapse before March, then you are not eligible to do this. You have to wait until the testing center is open. They basically don't want people to use the excuse of saying, well, I let it lapse, my currency lapse, and then now I want to get back and do it. It's easy. I can do it online. So I'm just going to do that. Um, they're basically saying only if you were affected by COVID and by the, the closure of the testing centers, then only then can you do it. So March to September, if your certificate expires during that period of time, then you can actually extend it. This actually affects me because my certificate is due to be renewed in August. And I'm going to assume that actually a lot of people are going to be in the same boat because um, the FAA release part 107 in August of 2014, of uh, 2016, I'm sorry, 2016. So 2016 to 2018, 2018 to 2020, a lot of people that get their certificate in August and in September when part 107 first came out are going to be affected by this. So uh, the process is simple. You go online, you take the test, you're good for another six months, and then you hope that in six months we're done with this mess, and then we can go back to the testing center and basically uh, take the actual test with the FA. Now, I think I actually have a testing center open near me, so I'm probably going to do that. But uh, for those of you that don't, that's an option. The next thing that I want to talk about is Anafi. Uh, Parrot, actually, I should say Parrot is the name of the company. Parrot is a French company. And uh, two weeks ago, I talked about a rugged version of their Anafi drone uh, that was about to come out. And they finally released it. It's called the Anafi USA. And it's called USA for several reasons. It's uh, designed for the US Army in the first place, but also because it technically contains a lot of parts that are made in the US. Uh, if you listen to the presentation from the CEO of the company, they're basically saying that um, it only contains Chinese plastic, if that makes any sense. Uh, but most of the parts are coming from either the US or Europe, uh, even though in their presentation they missed a lot of the big parts uh, that, were, that were not mentioned where these were coming from. So I'm going to let you guess where those are coming from. But with that being said, um, from uh, the, the, the specs standpoint, this thing is equipped with three cameras. 
Uh, two of the cameras are used for the 32X zoom camera. So this will zoom 32X, which is actually quite a bit. They say that you can see stuff from 3.1 miles away, which is five kilometers. Uh, from 5K away, you can see something with a 21 megapixel sensor, uh, which is actually pretty cool. Three miles away is pretty impressive. Um, Coupled with that is a FLIR camera where you can see thermal stuff, which also apparently can be uh, paired with the zooming function, not to 32x it looks like, but they're saying that you can fly pretty high up and still be able to see, uh, for example, if you're doing inspection of solar panels, then you can actually see them from a pretty high altitude. Now, uh, some specs, some additional specs, I should say, 500 grams, which is pretty lightweight, pretty quiet, around 79 decibels, which is one of the quietest out there. Uh, they claim to be ready in 55 seconds. So if you need to get up and fly, then this is the drone that you need. And also an all weather uh, drone right there. So during the release, so I'm not even sure actually when that happened, but the CEO of the company, his name is Henri Sedou. Um, he basically publicly slammed DJI by saying that there was a data leak in the DJI Go app and that it was uh, kind of quiet and they modified something in the software to uh, get around the data leak that was supposedly found by this company. Uh, interestingly, DJI came back, and this is something that actually has been out there for a while, not the leak in itself, but the fact that their Mimo app, not the Go app, but the Mimo app, which is um, assigned to their Osmo devices, uh, the Mimo app had something where the data would go to a third party, and that was when people wanted to share their videos, and, uh, and that came as potentially a threat. So DJI had fixed that, but it was never really about the DJI go for. So DJI responded saying what I just said. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting for the CEO to go publicly directly at DJI. Um, I think it's interesting that these companies out there are trying to compete with DJI, not by releasing products, but by trying to attack them on something that has been all over the news, which is the, the supposed uh, data leak issue. So. Um, I wish these companies would focus their R&D and basically create drones that people want to buy rather than try to take the other people down. Uh, this is the same thing that a lot of people unfortunately do, a lot of companies unfortunately do. Sell your product because it's good, not because uh, you're trying to take the other company down. That's my advice for you, uh, Parrot. The last thing I want to discuss is something coming out again from DJI. I know I talk a lot about DJI, but they do a lot of stuff out there. Is a drone rescue map, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, drones are used for good every single day in the world. And, uh, and sometimes they used to save lives. And DJI compiled a map all over the world of all the different uh, rescue missions that have happened where lives were saved. And if you look at the map, it's pretty cool. You can see, you can click on different countries. So in the US, there was 130 rescues. In Europe, it was 63. In Asia, it was 23. And then a bunch in Latin America, Africa, and then um, Oceania right there. You can click on each of them and then you can see, click on even more detail to find actually exactly what happened. So again, I thought this was pretty cool. If you want to feel good moment about how drones are being used when people are maybe yelling at you for flying your drone around, uh, then this is really a good way to do it. So. Um, so this is all I have for this week. Uh, this week we actually released two really cool videos. I invite you, uh, they're a little bit different than the news update that we usually do. Uh, Don and I have been flying a lot more on a regular basis. And uh, we, a couple weeks ago, we went out and chased a bunch of mountain bikers down the trail. So I invite you to go watch this and just appreciate how talented actually Don is with flying this drone, this FPV drone. This is high speed stuff at uh, really close proximity to trees, to a lot of different things. And he's just absolutely amazing. So you'd be blown away by this footage. Just try to imagine doing this, uh, flying the drone in between all these mountain bikers and, and doing that safely. So uh, we had a lot of people around just as, uh, as safety pilots, as you do this kind of operation, it's really important. And then another video is something that I produce actually, a video of an area near me that I absolutely love flying into. And, and I woke up one morning early, the, the light was gorgeous. So I just went out and shot some of these footage. So I invite you to look at those a little bit different than what we usually do, but uh, always enjoyable to see something that is just drone footage and uh, flying for fun. So that's what we do as well. This is all I have. As always, please like, subscribe, do everything you want. We're getting close to uh, on our way to 5,000 followers. So we're uh, excited if you want to follow us and get more information about drones. And with that being said, I've got more courses that are coming up in the pipeline. We actually have uh, three big courses that are right around the corner that are going to be released. And I'll tell you more information when that happens. But um, in the meantime, you have a great weekend and I will see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.